Welcome and thanks for joining us today for this quick overview of Project for the Web. In the next couple of minutes, we will talk about Project Home. How, how do you get to Project for the Web in the first place? Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about that home screen. We'll look at the grid view, the board view, and the timeline view. Those are the three views available in Project for the Web. And we'll look at what you can do with each of those different views. So the first thing we're going to look at together within the tool, uh, when you look at Project for the Web here, or actually you're looking at Project Online, but you notice up here where the word project is, if you currently have a Project Online environment and Project for the Web has been rolled out for you already, then if you click on Project right here, you're going to see this same screen that I see. If you click on New Blank Project, it will open a blank project for you in Project for the Web. However, what we're going to do instead is step into a project that I've already created. It's called PFTW Demo. When I click on the name of that, it's going to open first to the grid view. That's the last one I was looking at. And you can see a task list here. You've got dates, you've got durations. You can see this column called depends on. That's your predecessor column if you're accustomed to working in Microsoft Project. There's also um, another field if, I, if you come over here and click on add column. You can see dependents, so that would be the equivalent of your successors in Microsoft Project. A couple of things I'll point out for you here uh, that people usually get pretty excited about. It's really easy to identify tasks that are running late. Right now, this task is scheduled to finish on 4-6, or I should say it was scheduled to finish on 4-6. Today is the 8th, um, for those of you who may be watching this later. And so it should have already completed. Uh, so the red is showing me that it is late. If one were to highlight in yellow, that would indicate that it is on the path to being late. Um, it's not late yet, but it's it's being pushed out and getting closer and closer to that point where it will become a late task. If you want to get more information about a task, you'll notice that you've got this vertical ellipsis here. If you click on that, you've got lots of different options here. Um, for one thing, we could make this a subtask of the task above it, and it'll insert it. I'm going to undo that real quick by clicking on that ellipsis again, and then clicking on promote subtasks. So it's the equivalent of outdenting the tasks. You can mark a task as complete by simply clicking on the circle next to it. It puts the checkbox in it, draws the line through it, same things that you're used to seeing uh, when you work with say a task list in SharePoint for example. Uh, you can assign resources to your project. Now in order to assign these named people to these various tasks over here, I first had to build my team for this project. To build my team, I come up here in the upper right where it says group members, and I can start typing names to find someone who is going to join our team. So I could add, let's say for example, Christina to our team. Now, if I wanted to assign Christina to a task, all I have to do is go down to that task, click on Add Resource, and then I can select Christina's name. Notice I can also select multiple names as well. You can see some of the tasks have multiple people assigned to them. Now, I want to insert a column because you can see that we've got tasks over here that are complete. Um, however, it's possible that you may have some tasks you know, that are 25% complete or 75% complete. So let's go ahead and insert that percent complete column. And then I'm going to click on the name of it and simply drag it over here so that it's showing up right after the start name of that, I'm sorry, right after the name of that task. And you can see here that overall the development uh, deliverable, all of the subtasks under deliverable, under development is 33% complete as it's waiting on these additional tasks to complete. Now, if I wanted to go in and adjust that percent complete, I can click on the ellipsis and go to details, or I can just click on the little information icon. And over here, 
when you're looking at the detail screen, you'll see you've got start and finish. You can update that there as well. You can update duration. Percent complete is right here. So I'm just gonna type in 25% complete. If you are using the Agile Kanban, you wanna use a board, you wanna use sprints or buckets, you can do that as well. Um, and I'll show you where I created those in a few minutes. But if I wanted to say that this task belongs in the second sprint or it's on the backlog, I could go in and make those adjustments as well. And then finally, you've got the ability to go in and capture the effort involved in the task. And then of course, you could add another dependency if you wanted to. So you can see that it's already been updated as 25% complete here. So this is the, the grid view. These are the basics. Uh, it's data driven. You've got all of the details in front of you. You can move things around. You can make updates as you need to. Let's take a look at the board, which is gonna more closely resemble um, what you would be working with if you were working with sprints, um, if you're working with Kanban and Agile and those things. So you can see here that I've assigned each task to a, a different bucket. And between tasks, I can drag and drop, I'm sorry, between buckets, I can drag and drop the tasks. So it's easy for um, those tasks to get moved around as needed. And the ones that are in red, again, you can tell you that it's late. And the one that, that's in yellow here tells you that it is on the path to being late. Right now it's grouping by bucket. In the upper right hand corner, I can say group by progress, group by finish date, uh, but typically most people like to see it grouped by bucket. The last view we'll look at is the timeline view. Now, this is what you may be accustomed to seeing uh, a Gantt chart. This, this is your Gantt chart. So if you're used to working with Microsoft Project, you're used to these Gantt charts. Um, I do wanna show you how you can set dependencies here in this view. Uh, but I tell you what, let's jump back over to the grid real quick first. I am going to add a new task. So I'll just add a new task down here at the bottom. And I'm not feeling too creative, so I'm gonna call it new task. And then when I go back over to the timeline, for this particular task, new task, I wanna see that task bar, if you will, in this particular view. But if I come up here to scroll to task, it's blank. And that's because I haven't set any details for this task. Uh, so I need to come in here and set a duration for the task so it at least knows when I expect it to start, when I, you know, how long do I expect it, expect it to take, and so on and so forth. So now that we have that task bar there, we've put that duration there. If you wanted to add dependencies here on the timeline, you just hover over the task bar and click and drag until you have the next task bar highlighted. And that gives you um, the same visual that you would get out of Microsoft Project. Again, it's just another way to display the information. So what we looked at today was the grid. We spent most of our time there. That's just a lot of data. A lot of people who are not visual and just wanna see the data are gonna love this. We looked at the board where you can put tasks in buckets and move them around. And then we looked at the timeline, which is basically your Gantt chart uh, for a project for the web. So I am gonna stop sharing this right now. And we are gonna go back to the PowerPoint presentation for just a few seconds and then we'll be done. So what I would like to make sure you're aware of is that we provide webinars on a regular basis. And so for example, on April 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern, we are gonna show you how to connect the report pack and go over the report pack for Project for the Web, uh, see what kind of reporting you can do. On 423, we're extending Project for the Web with CDS with custom task attributes. And then on 57, we're gonna have a webinar covering the Microsoft PPM exam review. In addition to attending any of those webinars, which of course you can find on our website at www.ppmworks.com, you can also connect with us on LinkedIn. You can um, follow our blog. We try to post regularly and have lots of great tips and tricks out there uh, on different things you may be trying to accomplish with all of the different Office 365 applications, not just project, um, not just project for the web or project online, but 
Teams and Power Apps and Power BI and everything that you can imagine there. So thanks for taking the time to watch our video today. I hope it's been helpful for you. And I hope that we will hear from you soon.